What's up YouTube? Defragon here with another video on blood decays this time for flag carrying in Battlegrounds. It's uh, got some tips and some tricks and some really basic ideas of how to flag carry and hopefully it can help some people out there. So in the video I'm going to be running a Warsong Gulch as flag carrier. And right now what I'm doing is I'm just telling everyone that I'm going to be the flag carrier. And I basically tell one healer and one DPS to stay on me at all times. And I have at least one or two people run into the middle of the alliance to slow down their zerg or to break it. To keep them from getting to our flag as fast as I do to get to their flag. And it typically works, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on who actually goes there to break the Zerg. If it's someone like a Frost Mage, then yeah, it works really well. Um, right now I'm looking through the Alliance team to see what they have, how many healers they got, and how many healers we have. It's always good to know what you're up against. Uh, some of the add-ons that I'm using, uh, the little green bars and blue bars on the sides of my characters, that's Ice HUD. Basically it lets me watch my HP and the enemy's HP easier, and it has a lot of other neat little features to it that the basic UI doesn't have. Um, the little glowing orbs are my is my rune add-on called Engraved. It helps out a lot in keeping track of my runes. It's a lot more sleek looking as well. And the larger icons below that is my uh, extra bars, is what it's called. And I can basically move bars around anywhere I want and resize them. And I apologize for this transition, but I seem to have lost a track in my recording. But it didn't miss anything. It was just me running from point A to point B to their base. Right now, I'm grabbing their flag as quick as I can, picking up the flag, and I'm going to go take the tunnel to grab the speed boost to get out of there quicker and right now there's a rogue and a DK on me which they can't really do anything to me uh, as you can see the breaking their zerg didn't work too well I don't know what happened there uh, but the, we picked up the flags at about the same time which it really does help if you're able to delay their flag capture or their flag pickup I should say it really helps in the long run especially if you're like at your base or if you're in your flag room typically you'll be in your flag room with their flag by the time they're in mid with your flag and it helps out a lot in killing their uh, flag carrier and right now I'm boosting past straight through the middle because at this point it's just a random battleground I don't really care it's pretty easy um, some other add-ons that I'm using that you can't really see right now is cool down to go. You'll see it pop up whenever I'm fighting. It'll uh, and what I'm doing right now is one very important thing to have in battlegrounds, rated battlegrounds, is map awareness. Just because I'm running forward doesn't mean I have to look forward. You want to zoom out all the way and you want to keep an eye on your surroundings, especially if you're. Uh, Death Knight and your flag carrying, what I like to do is I like to look around and look behind me. And if I see Alliance coming up on me on mounts, I'll go ahead and target them. And as soon as they get in range, I'll chains of ice them to keep them away from me. It helps out in getting to your base quicker without them slowing or stunning you. Right here, what I'm doing is really important as well. For one, you always want to stay on top of your flag cap point as long as you can. It's where you want to be at all times. And you want to face your back against a wall that way you can avoid backstabs from rogues it helps in reducing damage uh, always have your back against the wall and always be on top of your flag capture point because if you get away from your flag capture point a rogue could sap you or you could get stunned or AOE feared like I'm getting right now and they could get your flag back and when they do that, someone could just run, pick up your flag, and run out. And you wouldn't have been able to have capped it. So you want to stay on the cap point as long as you can. It really, really helps. I find out that I find it a lot, like, 50% more efficient. If people don't stand on the flag capture point, it really does mess up games. It, it breaks games by a long shot. I don't know how many times I've seen it break a game. See, like right there, just bam. And I capped it within not even a second. 
Now, right now, they're Zergs just now getting there as I capped it, and I guess they're pretty pissed off at me, and they're going to go ahead and try and kill me anyways. I could run, but they would just follow me and kill me anyways. I'm the only one there, so I just decided to have a little bit of fun with it and see how long I can last before they kill me. Let's see how many people. I got a Druid, DK, Hunter. Pretty sure there's a priest somewhere. Nope. Pally. A good amount of alliance on me. So I just sit there not humor him for a bit. <clears throat> now, right now, what somebody else needs to be doing, like they just did, is someone's picking up their flag right now. And what I do is... As soon as I die, I respawn and I run to the person that has their flag and I pick it up off of them. That way, there's less time in between running flags and you can do it quicker and faster. So right now I'm respawning and I'll run. I look at the map to check where he is with our flag. I'll run straight to him. Normally, I'll pick the flag up off of them immediately as soon as it's safe. But the thing is, this is, of course, a random battleground and they don't always do that like this guy he wants to carry the flag up without giving it to me right away which could easily cost us the game especially for the fact that he's a clothy that could really hurt the game that's if you're a DPS in a battleground don't try to be the flag carrier I mean if you're going to pick up the flag to bring it to the flag carrier that's fine but especially if you're clothy just give it to a plate wearer at least because it really helps out so right now I'm gonna go run right back to the base and get right back on top of the flag cap point and I'll stand right there with my back against the wall like uh, I did the first time alright some of my macros that I use while this is going on some of the macros I use are there's a Lichborn macro which casts Lichborn and automatically starts using death coils on myself to heal me. Uh, I have a macro that pops all my defensive cooldowns. Like whenever, say, five people, five alliances are again on me while I have the flag, I'll pop that defensive cooldown and it gives me all the buffs that I need to survive. I have... Uh, I have a, a macro that pops my offensive cooldowns. It'll pop my runic weapon. It'll pop uh, blood fury. And it'll pop my trinket. That way I can dish out damage whenever I need to. I have a couple of other macros. Like one, I have a keybind for my trinket. And I have a macro that uses vampiric blood. And then uses rune tap. To give me back a higher amount of health. Which helps out whenever taking large amounts of damage. Um, hmm. Um, having your stuff keybound. That is extremely important in PvP. You have to have everything bound to a key. If you're a clicker, then you're going to have a lot of problems. It's going to drastically reduce your PvP skills. I mean, you can be good as a clicker. I'm not saying you can't. But it really, really helps out if you macro or keybind all of your abilities. Um, become macro friendly because you're going to need macros. It really helps that you have macros. Learn about macros. Look up stuff on your class um, because that also helps out a lot. It saves time. Like with my defensive cooldowns where it pops all my defensive cooldowns at once instead of having to go through and click them individually. Helps out. Also, you'll notice that I still have my defensive cooldowns down on my uh, top action bar. That's because I like to keep track of the cooldown on each individual uh, defensive cooldown. So I know when each one is up. And in case I need to use one individual cooldown, like Amshell, if a mage is on me, then I can just click it. It's uh, I find it a little lot simpler that way. Right here, uh, I have him give me the flag. And I'm going to do the same thing that I always do. Back up against the wall with my back against the wall, standing on top of the cap point. Um, this UI that I'm using, by the way, isn't temporary. I'm still working on it. I'm testing with it. It's kind of uh, experimental. 
I guess you'd say. But it works out pretty well. I like it in both Frost and Blood. And another thing, Blood DKs, I mean, don't get used to playing Blood Spec in Battlegrounds that don't require a Flag Harrier. I mean, Blood's good and all to mess around with, but it's really only needed if you're going to carry a Flag. I see Blood DKs and BGs now that are in... Arathi Basin, which isn't really needed. I mean, you don't need a Blood DK in Arathi Basin. I mean, you, you deal minimal damage. The only thing is you survive, but I mean, it doesn't really help out the team as much as it would if you were Frost or Unholy. It's, it's really annoying to have to deal with Blood DKs in Battlegrounds where they're not needed either. I mean... Especially whenever, because they're going to nerf Blood DKs eventually for PvP. And you really shouldn't get used to playing a Blood DK. You should get used to playing an offensive Death Knight for Battlegrounds that don't require a flag carry. Because if you get to the point to where you start relying on Blood and you learn Blood really well, and they nerf it, you'll have to relearn uh, Frost or Unholy. And learn to play a new thing. It's always best to broaden your horizon. Don't just play one spec. Blood is fun to mess with. Just don't only use blood. Because I see a lot of Death Knights that only play blood. And it's not good. <laughs> Things get really bad that way. It's always best to broaden your horizons in PvP. Now right now I'm not following one of my rules uh, I'm not staying on the cat point as much as I should and that costs me a cap here in a minute and you'll see why this is a good example right now I'm focusing on the death knight and the rogue we can't get our flag back and I see the druid that I didn't know was behind me and he cat he grabs the flag and then runs out that's exactly why it's always best to stay exactly on the flag cat point that's a perfect example And right now, the Death Knight and the Priest or Rogue are just messing with me, and I'm just trying to stay alive. <clears throat> now, one thing I don't understand right here is, I guess my 9 button on my Naga mouse was messing up or something or maybe I was silenced I don't know but I was trying to use my rune tap there and it wouldn't let me because it was procced <coughs> and another thing for death knights kind of basic information but you want to use death strike as much as possible it's how you survive if you can't use death strike use heart strike until your your unholy runes and your frost runes are death runes that way whenever they get off cooldown you can use death strike more times in a row to build up your shield and to build up your HP pool and another thing as far as uh, gymming and enchanting for blood decays I know that it's every tank loves to have that huge HP pool but you want to avoid that you do not want to gym straight up stamina that is very very bad you want to mix between strength gems, mastery gems, and resil and stam gems. The reason you want to use strength gems is because your death strike. The more damage you do with the death strike, the more you heal yourself for, which is your main move, the move that you spam to survive. So the more damage you do with it, the better you're going to be at surviving. The reason you want to gem mastery is because you're uh, shield buff you get while using death strike the more mastery you have the more that your shield is going to absorb every time you use death strike and that shield is going to stack up and the reason you want to do resil is of course to reduce the amount of incoming damage you receive and make sure you're hit capped which for pvp is five percent and make sure your expertise capped which is either 17 or 16% I'm pretty sure it's 17% you want to be expertise capped and hit capped before any other so if you're not you can reforge for it or you can gym for it as well as far as meta socket goes uh, a good meta gym is the one that gives 81 stamina and 2% increased armor from items 
I think is what it does. Uh, those are the best gems that you can get. Um, if I were to go in further detail, I would go, or if you want me to go in further detail on enchants and everything, I can make another video later. Also, if you want me, uh, want a further in-depth video on my user interface and the add-ons, I have a video released for that. It's under my Frost DK PvP video, which you can watch it. And I apologize for the video lag. I guess something happened during, uh, capturing with fraps that it caused this video lag. I guess I had a program running in the background that was taking random bursts of my CPU's power causing it to video lag like this and I apologize for that. I also apologize for the length of this video. I know it is kind of a lengthy video and I didn't mean for it to be that way. That's just how this battleground turned out. <laughs> right now I'm running, grabbing their flag. I'm going to take it under the tunnel in hopes that the speed boots are there. If so, that helps out in getting back to their base a lot quicker. <laughs> Typically, I always take this way, unless... You always want to take down the middle tunnel, unless you don't have a lot of your allies in the middle of the map. If you don't have a lot of your allies in the middle of the map, that could leave you prone to getting CC'd and DPS down uh, on the way back to the base. Most blood DKs, though, are really a good blood DK can easily survive it and go all the way through mid without having any trouble. And another thing, a real big thing, what I'm doing right here is notice that I'm still hitting him, but I'm running forward at full speed. So I'm, uh, I'm avoiding backpedaling. Backpedaling is when you walk directly backwards with your character and you move, I think it's 50% slower. And you moving 50% slower really hurts the time it takes for you to get from point A to point B with the flag. See, I'm moving at normal speed, and I'm still hitting the enemies behind me with death strikes to keep my health up. All you do is turn your camera to the side and run to the side. That way you're running in a straight line to your point of destination, and you're hitting the people behind you without having to walk backwards. Backpedaling is very, very hurtful in PvP. You have to learn not to backpedal. If the best thing you can do to get to learn to stop backpedaling is to completely unmacro your S key for moving backwards. In PvP, you don't need it. You really don't need that key. Backpedaling takes a while to uh, get out of the habit of doing if you're used to doing it, but once you get out of the habit of it, it's really easy to avoid. You'll start seeing people in BGs backpedal all the time. You'll be like, oh, what a new backpedaler. You get used to it. And I'm pretty sure this is, yep, this is the cap win of the game. Notice, every time, put my back against the wall and stay on top of the cap point. That is mandatory as a flag carrier. If you want to get anywhere in being a Blood DK flag carrier, you have to do that. Alright, well, I thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please subscribe, like the video. Um, I will be making more videos. If you want more instructional videos, I could easily do that. I could go into more depth about everything that I do. I could, uh, I'm going to be releasing some arena videos once my arena partners get geared for this season. And, uh, those 3v3 videos should be up in about, uh, a week and a half or so. So look forward to seeing more of those. Uh, this paladin's gonna try to do something, but the game's already over. But always try and fight on top of it as well. And there's the game. I think I did about 680,000 self heals in that game. Not too bad. But again, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you liked the video. Like the video if you liked the video and favorite it if you think it was a favorite. And I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.